Naval warfare is changing. It's no longer just about size, it's about lethality. While the world is distracted by massive destroyers and aircraft carriers, these corvettes are reshaping naval power all over the world. We are talking about agile warships armed with hypersonic missiles and next-gen tech. But which ones truly dominate the waves? Today we'll find out as we explore the top 10 most powerful corvettes in 2026. Let's kick things off with a German masterpiece that proves size is not everything in naval warfare. The K-130 Braunschweig class. You know, when we think of German engineering, we usually picture high-performance cars or incredibly precise industrial machines. But let me tell you, that same obsession with efficiency translates perfectly to the high seas. Entered into service to replace the old Tiger-class fast attack craft, the K-130 is designed specifically for littoral combat, which is just a fancy way of saying it fights best in shallow waters close to the shore. But do not let that fool you into thinking this is just a glorified Coast Guard cutter. This ship is roughly 89 meters long and displaces about 1,840 tons, making it a very agile contender. What makes the Braunschweig class so interesting for 2026 is how it balances automation with firepower. It operates with a crew of just 65 people. Can you imagine running a warship with such a small team? That is because the automated systems handle the heavy lifting. Speaking of heavy lifting, let's talk weapons. It packs the RBS-15 MK-3 anti-ship missiles, which are an absolute nightmare for enemy vessels because they have a range of over 200 kilometers and can even strike land targets. Have you ever seen a missile do a U-turn to hit a target? Well, these are smart enough to navigate complex waypoints. For defense, it uses the rolling airframe missile system to swat incoming threats out of the sky. It is the perfect ship to start our countdown because it represents the modern shift towards smaller, smarter, and punchier vessels. If you are enjoying this deep dive into naval power, make sure to smash that like button right now. It really helps the algorithm show this to more naval enthusiasts like you. The K-130 might not be the heaviest hitter on this list, but it sets the standard for what a modern Corvette should look like. Efficient, deadly, and hard to ignore. Moving from the Baltic Sea to the warmer waters of the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean, we have a joint entry that is making huge waves in the defense industry, the Ada class Babur class. This is where things get really interesting because this represents the rise of Turkey as a serious naval exporter. The Ada class was born out of the Milgem project, which was Turkey's ambitious plan to build their own warships from scratch. And boy, did they succeed. Pakistan saw this success and said, we want some of that, resulting in the Babur class variant. These ships are stealthy by design. If you look at the angles on the hull, they are designed to reduce the radar cross-section, making the ship appear much smaller on enemy sensors than it actually is. It is roughly 99 meters long and displaces about 2,400 tons. Now, why is this ship on our top 10 list for 2026? It is because of the versatility. These corvettes are built for anti-submarine warfare, patrol, and anti-surface warfare. They are equipped with Harpoon anti-ship missiles and a 76mm super rapid gun that can fire 120 rounds per minute. That is a wall of lead flying at anything that gets too close. The Pakistan Navy version, the Babur class, is even heavier on the firepower, featuring vertical launch systems for surface-to-air missiles. It is amazing to see how a design can evolve between two nations, isn't it? It is like buying a high-performance stock car and then tuning it specifically for your local racetrack. The propulsion is a combined diesel and gas turbine system, giving it a top speed of roughly 30 knots, which allows it to hunt down submarines or escape trouble quickly. This class proves that you do not need to be a traditional superpower to build a world-class warship. It is sleek, it is modern, and it is actively changing the balance of power in its region. Now let's head over to the Middle East, specifically to the Royal Saudi Naval Forces, to look at the Avante 2200 Al Jubel class. You might be wondering, how do you build a ship that operates effectively in some of the hottest and saltiest waters on Earth? Well, you ask the Spanish shipbuilder Navantia to create a custom beast for you. 
The Algebel class is a derivative of the Avante 2200 design, and it is a massive leap forward for Saudi Arabia's naval capabilities. These ships are about 104 meters long and displace 2,500 tons, pushing the boundary of what we typically call a corvette. Frankly, they are almost light frigates. One of the coolest things about this ship is its survivability in extreme conditions. We are talking about operating in the Red Sea and the Gulf, where temperatures can be brutal for both the crew and the electronics. But let's talk about the fun stuff. The weapons. This ship is armed to the teeth. It carries Harpoon Block 2 missiles and possesses a vertical launch system for air defense. Imagine being a pilot trying to approach this ship. You would have to deal with a very sophisticated radar and missile net. It also features a 76mm main gun, and for those close encounters, a 35mm Millennium gun, which is terrifyingly effective against small boats or drones. Have you noticed how important drone defense is becoming lately? The Al Jubail is ready for that modern threat environment. It also has a flight deck and hangar for a 10-ton helicopter, extending its eyes and ears over the horizon. This ship is a statement. It says that Saudi Arabia is not just buying off-the-shelf equipment anymore. They are commissioning tailored, high-tech platforms that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything else in the region. If you want to see more daily content about military technology like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have new videos coming out every single day. Okay, hold on to your hats because we are shifting gears to Russia and we need to talk about the Bayan M class. If you judge a book by its cover, or a ship by its size, you might make a fatal mistake with this one. The Bayan M is relatively small, only about 75 meters long, with a displacement of just 950 tons. In the world of warships, that is tiny. It was originally designed to operate in rivers and shallow coastal zones. It looks like a glorified riverboat, right? But here is the pattern interruption you were waiting for. This little ship has launched cruise missiles that have hit targets over 1,500 kilometers away. During the operations in Syria, Russia shocked the world by firing caliber cruise missiles from the Caspian Sea, way beyond the range anyone expected from such small vessels. This is the definition of punching above your weight. The Buyan M is essentially a floating missile battery. It sacrifices endurance and blue water sea keeping for raw offensive power. It carries an 8-cell vertical launch system specifically for the Kaliber or Onyx missiles. Think about that for a second. A ship that costs a fraction of a destroyer can deliver a strategic strike deep into enemy territory. It creates a huge headache for naval planners because you cannot just ignore these small ships anymore. They are like hornets, small, hard to catch, but the sting can be lethal. The class also features the A-190-100 millimeter naval gun, which is comically large for a ship of this size. But the Russians love their big guns. It is a very unique philosophy of naval design. Who cares if the crew is cramped or if the ship rocks violently in a storm, as long as it can sink an aircraft carrier or blow up a bunker 1,000 kilometers away? The Bayan M is the Mosquito Fleet realized in its most dangerous form. Let's fly over to East Asia now, because we have to talk about Taiwan's answer to a massive threat, the Tuo Chiang class. This ship is often nicknamed the Carrier Killer, and for good reason. Just look at it. It does not look like a normal ship. It uses a wave-piercing catamaran design. That means it has two hulls which makes it incredibly stable and, more importantly, incredibly fast. We are talking about speeds of up to 45 knots. That is roughly 83 kilometers per hour on water, which is practically flying for a warship. Why is it shaped like that? It is all about stealth and speed. Taiwan knows it cannot match the sheer number of ships in the Chinese Navy, so they went for asymmetric warfare. The Tuochang is designed to hide in the radar clutter of coastal waves, dash out at high speed, unleash hell, and run away before the enemy knows what hit them. It is packed with firepower that seems impossible for a 600-ton ship. It carries a mix of Shengfeng-2 and Shengfeng-3 anti-ship missiles. The Shengfeng-3 is a supersonic missile, meaning it travels faster than the speed of sound, giving enemy defense systems very little time to react. 
it is like trying to catch a bullet with your teeth. The ship also carries the Sea Sword two air defense missiles to protect itself. It is small, hard to detect, and fast. It is basically the ninja of the naval world. The catamaran design also gives it a wide deck, allowing for more weapon placement than a single hull ship of the same length. It is a brilliant example of engineering born out of necessity. They needed a ship that could survive a massive invasion force, and they built one of the most unique corvettes in the world to do it. It is agile, it is deadly, and it looks like something out of a science fiction movie. We are returning to Russia for the number five spot, because the Starogoschia class deserves a lot of attention. While the Buyan M we talked about earlier is a riverboat with big missiles, the Starogoschia is a proper blue water combatant. This is the backbone of the modern Russian surface fleet, displacing around 2,200 tons and measuring 104 meters. It is a significant step up in capability and sustainability. What makes this ship cool is its construction. The superstructure is made largely of composite materials, specifically carbon fiber. Why would they do that? To absorb radar waves. This significantly reduces the ship's signature, making it harder for enemies to lock onto it. It is not invisible, but it is stealthy. In terms of weapons, it is a jack of all trades. It carries the Uran anti-ship missile system, which is reliable and deadly. But what is really interesting is the Packet NK system. This is a dual-purpose system that can launch torpedoes to kill submarines. Or, and this is the crazy part, launch anti-torpedo torpedoes. Yes, you heard that right. If a torpedo is coming at this ship, it can shoot its own torpedo to intercept it underwater. That is some James Bond-level technology right there. The Steragoschi serves as a multi-role platform capable of hunting subs, fighting surface ships, and supporting landings. It bridges the gap between the old Soviet Navy and the new modern Russian fleet. It is designed to operate further from home than the Boy and M, giving Russia a way to project power in the Atlantic or the Pacific. It is a rugged, well-rounded fighter that does not rely on just one gimmick to win a fight. If you are loving these technical breakdowns, remember to check back daily for more military insights. Now, let's cool things down a bit, literally. We are going to Finland to look at the Poyanma class. If you think fighting at sea is hard, try doing it when the sea is frozen solid. The Finnish Navy operates in some of the most challenging conditions on the planet, so they cannot just buy a standard Corvette. They need an icebreaker with guns. The Poyanma class is set to replace several older vessels and serves as the flagship of the Finnish fleet. These ships are larger than their predecessors, roughly 114 meters long with a displacement of 3,900 tons. That is huge for a Corvette. In fact, many would argue this is actually a frigate, but Finland calls it a Corvette, so we will play by their rules. The hull is reinforced to break through ice, allowing it to operate year-round in the Baltic Sea. But do not think this is just a chunky icebreaker. It is packed with high-tech sensors and weapons. It features the Gabriel-5 anti-ship missiles, which are incredibly advanced and capable of dealing with modern threats. It also has a vertical launch system for evolved Sea Sparrow missiles for air defense. But here is the kicker. It also has rail capability for sea mines. Mine warfare is a huge part of Finnish naval strategy. Imagine a ship that can fight off aircraft, sink enemy destroyers, break through a frozen ocean, and lay a trap of naval mines all at the same time. That is the Pojanma. It represents the concept of total defense. Every asset has to do everything. It is a survivalist dream ship. The integration of Saab's combat management system means the crew has incredible situational awareness. It is not just a ship. It is a mobile command center that can survive the harshest winter you can imagine. At number three, we are heading back to the Persian Gulf to look at the Doha Al Zubara class of the Qatari Amiri Navy. If you want to see what happens when you have a virtually unlimited budget and you hire the best Italian designers, this is it. Built by Fin Cantieri, these ships are absolute beauties. They are roughly 107 meters long and displace about 3,250 tons. Again, we are blurring the lines between Corvette and Frigate here. But the firepower on this thing is undeniable. The most striking feature is its air defense capability. 
Most Corvettes carry short-range missiles for self-defense. The Doha class? It carries Aster 30 Block 1 missiles. These are long-range area defense missiles that can hit targets over 100 kilometers away. That is a capability usually reserved for large destroyers. Putting that kind of long arm on a Corvette hull is a massive flex. It means a single Doha class ship can create a no-fly zone over a massive chunk of the Persian Gulf. It also carries Exocet Block 3 anti-ship missiles, which are legendary for a reason. But it is not just about missiles. The radar systems on board are top tier, capable of tracking ballistic missiles. The design is very Italian, sleek, stylish, and incredibly functional. It also has a huge flight deck for an NH-90 helicopter. Qatar commissioned these ships to ensure they could protect their massive offshore gas fields and shipping lanes independently. It is a symbol of national status. When this ship sails into a port, everyone knows Qatar is not messing around. It combines the agility of a Corvette with the heavy punch of a destroyer, making it one of the most potent ships in the region in 2026. We are nearing the end, and we have to bring back the Russians for the Gremyashchi class. Remember the Steragushchi class we talked about earlier? Well, imagine if that ship went to the gym, took steroids, and learned karate. That is the Gremyashchi. It is an evolution of the previous design, but tailored to host the most terrifying weapons in the Russian arsenal. While it looks similar on the outside, the internal layout was redesigned to fit the UKSK vertical launch system. Why is that specific acronym important? Because it allows this Corvette to fire the Zircon hypersonic missile. We are talking about a missile that flies so fast, up to Mach 8 or 9, that current defense systems basically cannot stop it. Putting a hypersonic strategic weapon on a 2,500-ton Corvette is insane. It changes the rules of the game. A fleet of these Corvettes could theoretically threaten an entire U.S. carrier strike group from a distance where the Corvettes are hard to detect. The Gremyashchi is designed for the Pacific Fleet, meaning it is meant to operate in the vast expanse of the ocean against high-tech adversaries. It is slightly larger and has better endurance than its predecessor. It serves as a warning that technology is shrinking the gap between small ships and capital ships. In the past, you needed a battleship to project power. Now you just need a Gremyashchi with a Zircon missile. It keeps the stealth characteristics and the anti-submarine capabilities of the Steragushchi, but adds that knockout offensive punch. It is a prime example of how Russia prioritizes offensive lethality over almost everything else. And finally, we arrive at the number one spot, the SARR-6 class of the Israeli Navy. If the Doha class was a flex, the SARR-6 is a fortress. This ship is widely considered the most heavily armed warship in the world relative to its size. It is built in Germany based on the K-130 design we started with. But then Israel took the hull and filled every single square inch with advanced weaponry and sensors. It was built with one main purpose, to protect Israel's offshore gas rigs from rockets and missiles. To do this, it carries the naval version of the Iron Dome, known as Sea Dome, and the Barak 8 air defense system. We are talking about layers upon layers of missile defense on a ship that is only 90 meters long. It is absolutely packed. It has 40 vertical launch cells, 40 factorial on a Corvette. That is unheard of. It also packs Gabriel Rifthurm anti-ship missiles and torpedoes, but the real magic is the radar. It uses the ELM2248M FSTAR radar, which is comprised of four active electronically scanned arrays. This gives it a 360-degree view of the battlefield, capable of tracking hundreds of targets simultaneously. It is basically a floating supercomputer with enough missiles to fight a small war all by itself. The density of technology on the SAR-6 is mind-blowing. It represents the pinnacle of modern Corvette design, a compact, highly survivable, and overwhelmingly armed platform that can handle drones, cruise missiles, ballistic rockets, and surface ships all at once. It is the ultimate shield at sea, and that is why it takes our top spot for the most powerful Corvette in 2026. And there you have it, folks. These were the 10 best Corvettes in 2026. Which of these machines really impressed you? Let us know in the comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see much more rankings.
like these.